Welcome everybody, welcome to Claydesk. My name is Syed, and today I'm gonna to talk about Ansible Tower and Ansible Core itself. So the differences between the two, and of course, how they actually work, right? So let's dive right in, but before we do, So what is Ansible Tower, right? So consider the role of an air traffic controller at a busy, busy airport. Now, the controller's job is simply to manage multiple flights, right? Ensuring their takeoff, land, and navigate the airspace easily, right? And more safely and efficiently. That's the goal of the air traffic controller. Well, now imagine doing this job without a controlled tower. Well, who's going to manage all these airplanes, right, taking off and landing and so forth. So it'll be a chaotic, inefficient situation, okay? And of course, prone to errors as well. Now, Ansible Tower is like the control tower in this scenario. It's the enterprise version, guys, right? But for IT automation. So that's really what Ansible Tower, in a nutshell, to begin with, so that you understand easily, right? So it's really to automate the entire processes. And I'm going to talk about those as well. So it helps you manage and control and navigate through numerous automation tasks, like, for example, the IT environment, right? The entire processes. It provides a visual dashboard, so you can have a UI, a role-based access control, and of course, features like job scheduling, inventory management, and ensuring all the automation tasks are handled efficiently using Ansible Tower. So using the Red Hat Ansible it's also known as the Ansible Core, right? That's the original uh, Ansible that we're used to working with. So it's a common practice among sysadmins, DevOps engineers, and automation practitioners, right? Now, there, while there can be fewer use cases uh, in a way of Ansible Tower integration, I'm gonna talk about use cases later on as well, but really, uh, let's discuss the Ansible versus its enterprise version, which is the Ansible Tower. So, and I talked about who uses these, right? So if you're in the IT role, solutions architect, DevOps engineer, you are uh, most likely be using Ansible itself. And then of course, Ansible Tower, if you need to automate these tasks as well. So the features of Ansible Tower briefly, imagine you were a conductor of a grand orchestra, right? So each musician has a unique role and just giving you an easier example. And then you are controlling what each person does in that orchestra okay so let's dive deeper into the ansible tower features so that it's easier for you to take a look at now first is the visual dashboard so think of this as your music score right so it gives you a graphical overview of all the automation tasks in this case the musicians okay and that allows you to see who's playing what what is happening and how these processes are working the second important feature is the role-based access control. So think of this like assigning role to your musicians, right? So, hey, you got to do this, uh, you know, a person B has to do this and so forth, right? So each person has a role that you define uh, using Ansible Tower itself. And third important feature is the job scheduling. So now that you have all these tasks, well, you can schedule them. Who goes first? Who goes second? Who goes last? This is a better way uh, when we talk about automating your processes. And then, of course, fourth is the real-time job updates. This is like getting the live feedback from your performance, right? So when you schedule a job, it's going to give you real-time updates as using your graphical uh, dashboard or UI, you can actually see in real time. And of course, the next is external logging itself. So this is where you're actually recording everything, you're monitoring everything, the entire processes are being monitored and recorded so that it's easier for you to see and then later revisit if need be, right? So this is really your entire symphony, right? So you can chain together multiple playbooks, for example, creating complex workflows to handle sophisticated automation tasks. All right, the fifth feature is the RESTful API itself. Now, this feature allows Ansible Tower to play with other tools and services. Well, like API, right? It connects with other external services. So this creates a harmonious IT environment. So if you need to use a third-party tool, for example, you can have a use RESTful API uh, to integrate those as well. So 
if you are really uh, working with these kind of scenarios that I mentioned earlier, or if you are interested in these features, then Ansible Tower is what you're uh, looking to do. So uh, in terms of roles, right, think of roles as different departments in your city, for example, and this is just another example. So I'm laying it down so that it's easy for you to understand how Ansible Tower works and what is the functionality and how it automates things, okay? All right, so let's move forward. Let's talk about uh, modules, for example, and modules are like various tools and resources that you can actually use within Ansible Tower itself. And of course, you can also use tags and of course, working with and running the whole playbook. So the entire uh, scenario of Ansible Tower is for you to not only automate tasks, but actually monitor them, integrate with third party tools. And of course, create a flow that is more um, efficient. The entire idea of automation is bring efficiency to the organization, right? Cutting down redundant tasks and making things uh, more in terms of a flow itself. They can also use templates, for example. Uh, templates are predefined uh, set of rules, processes that you can actually use, and then you can customize those as you move forward based on your own project requirement. All right, so let me give you some uh, recommendations here as well. So when you're organizing your projects, keep your projects well structured and organized. This will make it easier for you and your team to be logically divided based on the environment itself, right? And of course, implementing RBACs, which is the role-based control, as I mentioned earlier, uh, helps you manage who has access, who doesn't have access, uh, how do people work, who has what responsibility, and so on. All right, let's move forward. I'm going to uh, now next talk about how to integrate the Ansible platform with existing software tools and processes using RESTful API. Now, this is sometimes easier said than done, but if you were already a DevOps engineer, solutions architect, you might have definitely worked with these already, so they're not that difficult, okay? So, for example, to integrate um, Ansible automation platform using existing software tools and processes, um, a RESTful API is required. Now, they use the RabbitMQ messaging system and store data into the PostgreSQL backend uh, database, okay? So possible architectures. So you're probably thinking, well, how do I architect the solution, for example, right? So first, uh, you could actually integrate database uh, that you have on a single machine. So a single workstation that connects to a remote database. You can also do multi-cluster uh, machine with high availability. That's another possible architecture you can actually use. Um, for example, a new sysadmin can get started with Ansible within hours. Ansible is, of course, free, and its latest version can be installed uh, with simply uh, running the sudo yum install, right, with a, a Y flag, Ansible. And that's how you simply install using Linux. And I'll demonstrate those um, as well. And there are other videos that you can actually watch where if you want to know hands-on. But here I'm just focusing on what is Ansible Tower, the features, and how it actually uh, benefits the architectures and you can actually use um, for your own uh, benefit, okay? So what really is Ansible Tower itself? Well, we talked about the features, right? But it takes you beyond Ansible's command line interface to web user interface. So that's the core uh, difference, right? So you have um, Ansible Core, which is a command line, for example, and now you have a GUI interface. Well, it's easier to work sometimes with, and more options are provided to you within the graphical user interface, okay? So it allows sysadmins and DevOps engineers and automation uh, people, uh, professionals to demonstrate the value and power of automation and provides easier training and demos, for example, to uh, potential clients that lead to quicker acceptance and overall buy-in, right? So you can add tool to your long-term automation strategy. As a sysadmin, for example, or DevOps um, engineer, uh, this may be, uh, could be your first time using Ansible Tower, but you'll be glad you decided to take this path because it will demonstrate your ability to analyze and deduce what's best for your organization, okay? Um, so think of this, uh, the big picture thinker, right? The automation um, scenarios. So this is where the uh, sometimes, and you're working with teams and you're collaborating with stakeholders, so your soft skills are also important, guys, right? Because not only you're a technical person, but hey, you're also communicating and um, talking with your own team or within your organization itself. So I've talked about the features itself. Next, I want to talk about 
a little bit about Ansible um, operating system because the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 uh, is the base operating system and you have to use Ansible 2.8 or greater um, on RHEL 8 to install Ansible Tower. So some of the prereqs and I'll list those as well so you can see in the prereqs uh, in the description if you need to install Ansible Tower um, on your uh, machine, right? So to get started, you can simply download the Tower setup package. The Ansible Tower installation has to run. Um, make sure you connect it to the internet. You can download the, and extract the Ansible Tower to your uh, control machine. And once the, the setup script finishes, you'll be able to uh, access the tower using the web, right? Because that's how you get the GUI interface. So once um, the login and password are set up, you authenticate successfully, you'll come to the tower dashboard, okay? Now, tower allows you to work easily with your team and across other teams, for example, that are spread out to automate in a dynamic and effective manner, okay? So we talked about that. Next is important. So I wanna talk about the overall scenario of how Ansible um, works with you, okay? And I talked about the architecture, the difference between the core and the Ansible Tower itself, okay? Now, if you're using the REST API, for example, you can connect, uh, simplifies things for example, cloud integration is compatible with uh, Amazon EC2, Rackspace, Microsoft Azure. So it's really versatile. So it's very powerful in that sense. So if you're trying to automate, you have a range of other platforms that you can actually use and work with, okay? So let's let's conclude so you understand um, what we talked about. The Ansible Tower is uh, definitely a useful add-on to the Ansible itself, Ansible Core itself, which, uh, basically allows you to do much of what can be done on the CLI. Now you have the graphical uh, interface. So it'll be uh, it'll be complementing, not replacing Ansible, and that's important. And the main application by automating uh, the, or presenting some of the main tasks graphically, okay? Especially the monitoring dashboards, these are important and helpful. So if you're monitoring your processes, now you have a better option. So as a major bonus, of course, it also greatly helps reduce the intimidation factor for those who are new to Ansible. So if you are getting you know, your, your hands and feet wet, getting into Ansible or Ansible Tower uh, may be a good way for you to get and get started, right? By presenting much easier to understand visual tool, but for playable creation, Ansible CLI is still the best option and keep that in mind. Because if you're, if you're working with playbooks, so if you're used to the CLI, that work uh, as well. But if you want enhanced um, automation and more powerful elements, then of course you need to work with Ansible Tower. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, post your questions or comments down below. I'll be happy to answer. And with this, thank you for watching. My name is Syed, and I'll see you guys next time.